It's Thursday, May 16. In the headlines, police stations being rebuilt, rehabilitated under Project Rock. Schools to review security entrance process. In business news, the Grace Kennedy Financial Group to host its inaugural financial fair this Friday. Regionally, Finance Minister encourages Jamaican delegation to explore opportunities in Guyana. And in sports, cable and wireless communications named ICC T20 World Cup Telecoms partner. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. The Ministry of National Security is working to rebuild police stations across the island through a project called ROC, that's Rebuild, Overhaul and Construct. Portfolio Minister Dr. Horace Chang shared the details during his contribution to the 2024-2025 sectoral debate in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. He also said police stations with acute issues are being addressed in the short term with plans for further rehabilitation. Delivering his seventh contribution to the sectoral debate as National Security Minister, Dr. Chang said for the first time in Jamaica's history, police stations are being built with embedded features designed specifically for the operations of officers. We have blueprints for police stations where all new construction adhere to standardized features based on their size and service demands and essentially to professional requirements. He says funds for the projects are procured from the Consolidated Fund and the Ministry of Finance in collaboration with the National Housing Trust and the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. The National Housing Trust focuses on areas where they have built homes. Security is a crucial to the communities where a social investment fund directed its assistant to bring opportunities to areas that have particular challenges in keeping with its mandate in dealing with extreme poverty. Dr. Chang says to date, 14 police stations have been fully rehabilitated. With the requisite design features, namely Shady Grove in St. Catherine, Port Antonio in Port Antonio and Buff Bay in Portland, Olympic Gardens in corporate area, Mount Salem in St. James, Spring Hill, Franklin Town, Adelphi, Lionel Town, Four Parts, Denham Town, Monique, Bogwalk and Hopewell. He says five new stations are under construction. Additionally, three major projects are being worked on. The Westmoreland Divisional Headquarters, which could become the area headquarters, for which we broke ground recently, is under construction and proceeding smoothly. That station will display a new concept. It, it reflects the kind of station we are building for the police across the island. The St. Catherine North Division Headquarters, for which we are about to break down any time now, and of course the specialized operation West Facility in Montego Bay, representing a combined investment of nearly $15 billion. He says additional rehabilitating projects will begin before the end of the year. There are no reports of Jamaicans suffering from any rare side effect caused by the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. So says Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton as he responded to public concerns at this week's post-cabinet press brief. AstraZeneca admitted in a court documents in February in the United Kingdom that its vaccine can, in very rare cases, cause TTS, that's thrombosis with thrombotocopenia syndrome. This is a very rare syndrome which occurs when a person has blood clots together with a low palatate count. This is a very rare syndrome which occurs when a person has blood clots together with a low platelet count. So we have clinically on record no report of and those who would have taken would be Highly unlikely, if not impossible, to have that side effect now, years after taking the vaccine, and we no longer are distributing the vaccine. So I think that's clear. AstraZeneca has withdrawn its COVID-19 vaccine from the commercial space due to the rare side effect. Jamaica's chief medical officer, Dr. Bessessa McKenzie, in giving her response, stressed that the vaccine is no longer being administrated in the country in any event. Because it has not been on the market 
okay, and just generally to address the concerns that have been there, have been in the public space for a few days. Um, AstraZeneca had released their vaccine from late 2020, and Jamaica started using the vaccine in 20, March 2021. The vaccine had gone through various um, studies and had proven to be highly effective vaccine, spe specifically in terms of reducing serious illnesses as well as reducing death. And so the vaccine was widely used early in the, in, the, um, in the response to COVID, and over 3 billion doses were produced worldwide. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says all schools have been instructed to review their entry policy. In particular, they must now seek to put in place measures to detect and seize weapons in schools, particularly knives and other implements that can be used to cause damage. I have directed the Ministry of National Security and the Ministry of Education to do a reassessment of the security risk of schools. So that way, we can get a better understanding of which schools are at risk mm -hmm. and how to direct resources to those schools. He says the government has already started to increase the number of case managers available for school intervention and will be increasing the number of school resource officers. Mr. Holness says plans are also being made to implement social intervention initiatives to help counter issues such as bullying and the recruitment of children to gangs. The Prime Minister made the comment during a meeting with the Custos of Manchester, Garfield Green, at the office of the Prime Minister on Wednesday. In recent weeks, there have been several incidents of violence at schools or involving students. The Early Childhood Commission, ECC, will host its fifth annual Professional Development Institute from May 20 to May 24. The PDI is a flagship event dedicated to enhancing early childhood education practices in Jamaica. Danita Rodney tells us more. With a focus on fostering collaboration and innovation, the PDI offers a platform for participants involved in the education sector to exchange ideas, engage in professional development workshops, and explore best practices in early childhood education. Addressing Wednesday's JIS Think Tank, Director of Cross-Sectoral Coordination at the ECC, Michelle Campbell, shared the theme for this year's event and what it means. This year, a place to belong, a child's right to quality, early childhood education is the theme. And this is a very special theme because by law, uh, we have to provide our children with the quality access um, to early childhood development services right here in Jamaica. So when we looked at our theme, we looked at the home, we also looked at the early childhood institution and the 12 standards that really guides what a quality institution should look like. Mrs. Campbell encouraged teachers to attend the event to garner additional strategies to utilize in their classrooms. Um, teachers will learn the strategies as to how to um, establish their classrooms, how to um, improve um, their classrooms because you're there all day. If you're not at home, you're at school for a number of hours and you want to be in an environment that's comfortable, that's loving, that's nurturing, because when that is established, then you're going to see true learning you know, flourish. You want to be in an environment where you can play, you can make your own decisions, and that is why you need to be at PDI this year. Alongside workshops, the PDI will showcase special presentations, notably one by Sesame Street, focusing on social-emotional development, with children actively participating in the session. During this time, we want our children to be able to regulate their feelings, our practitioners as well, and our parents. Um, so Sesame Street is going to be looking at that. And then there's going to be a period of time. I'm not going to tell you which characters, but we will have characters on the premises um, at lunchtime um, if you want to, to take a picture with um, the Sesame characters. But these are characters that children trust and believe in and actually learn from. So we are so happy that this year our children will be on site. I think that is the most remarkable 
part of this year's PDI is that the involvement of the children, hearing their voices, seeing them engage in the various activities. Other areas of focus include parenting, early learning and care, inclusion, stream, the arts, leadership and advocacy. Reporting for the news on PBCJ, I'm Danita Rodney. In the business report, the Grace Kennedy Financial Group will host its inaugural financial fair this Friday, May 17 at the Emancipation Park in New Kingston. The event, which is being hosted under the theme One Group, One Goal, will showcase the company's member companies, including Allied Insurance Brokers, First Global Bank, GK Capital Management, GK General Insurance, Key Insurance, Western Union, Bill Express, FX Trader, Canopy Insurance, and GK1. Several Jamaican government agencies which are integral to the financial services ecosystem will also be present at the fair, including the Tax Administration Jamaica, Jamaica Stock Exchange, and Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency. ARC Manufacturing has launched a Made of Jamaica brand campaign to showcase the company's commitment to Jamaican excellence, quality and culture. The initiative also couples with the company's 28th anniversary on May 16. ARC Manufacturing Executive Chairman Norman Horn says the company is committed to developing Jamaican people. He says, quote, We are a registered Jamaican company. We are not registered in St. Lucia. We are not registered in Bermuda. We are not registered in any other jurisdiction. End quote. Time now for more on the market movements with Denise Williams. During trading for the period of May 15, 2024, the following companies valued at 500 million Jamaican dollars or more in assets represent the overall volume leaders in terms of equity sale on the main market of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Toll Road Operator, Trans Jamaican Highway Limited, with 3,755,240 units, amounting to 30.88% of the market volume of the main market volume in terms of sales. Alternative Energy Provider, Wigton Wind Farm Limited, ordinary shares with 2,600,000. 172,328 units amounted to 21.97% of the market volume of the main market volume in terms of sales. NCB Financial Group Limited with 1,624,909 units amounted to 13.36% of the market value of the main market in terms of sales. During trading for the period of May 15, 2024, on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, the following companies represent the overall volume leaders in terms of sales of equities on the junior stock market with companies valued at 50 million or more Jamaican dollars in asset value. Electrical and hardware distribution firm, Fosterich Company Limited with 46 million 821,875 units amounting to 92.96% of the market volume of the junior market in terms of sales. Hotel food and beverage distributor, Everything Fresh Limited with 826,380 units amounting to 1.64% of the market volume of the junior market in terms of sales online education platform Edufocal Limited with 576,820 units amounting to 1.15% of the market volume on the junior market in terms of sales. Over on the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, trading on May 15, 2024, registered a volume of 257,287 shares crossing the floor of the exchange valued at 2,532,302 
Trinidad and Tobago dollars and nine cents. NCB Financial Group Limited was a volume leader with 151,473 shares, changing hands for a value of 397,149 Trinidad and Tobago dollars and 80 cents, followed by JMMB Group Limited with a volume of 26,680 shares being traded for 34,617 Trinidad and Tobago dollars and 70 cents. Moving from the money moves of investors, executives, and companies, we turn to the Forex market. On May 15, 2024, the Bank of Jamaica reported that US $60.3 million was bought from Forex traders, while US $67.3 million was sold to Forex traders. Buying directly from the Bank of Jamaica, foreign currency traders sold the US dollar for $156.88 and bought the US dollar for $155.68. The difference between the buy and sell rate was $1.20, which represents a profit for Forex traders for every US dollar traded. Canadian Forex traders earned a trading profit of $2.52 from transactions with the Bank of Jamaica. The Canadian dollar was sold at $115.11 and bought for $112.59. For traders looking at the British pound, they pocketed a profit of $4.34, selling it for $197.63 and buying it for $193.29. We continue to look at the joys of your first job at 18. You know, when you're young, this is an incredible milestone. Want to encourage you to monitor your credit report. You get a free one every year from each of the credit bureaus. So regularly check your credit report for errors or fraudulent activity. Address any discrepancies promptly to maintain a clean credit history. And with that, we wrap up today's business report. I'm Denise Williams. Appreciate your company. Stay well informed. Stay ahead of the curve. Until your next update. In regional news, Dr. Ashne Singh, Ghana's Minister of Finance, is encouraging Jamaica to consider lucrative opportunities within Guyana. He made these remarks while addressing a Jamaican delegation during their third business mission to Guyana. On Wednesday, Tobagonians got an opportunity to lend their voices to the Labour Ministry's National Stakeholder Consultation on Legislation to Govern HIV and AIDS in the Workplace. Minister of Labour Stephen McClashey describing the consultation as monumental said Trinidad and Tobago is charting new territory in addressing discrimination against persons living with HIV and AIDS. The Ministry of Labour, in collaboration with the Office of the Attorney General and the Ministry of Legal Affairs, have been tasked with the responsibility to amend existing and or develop new legislation to protect workers living with HIV and AIDS. Additionally, the Ministry has considered possible legislation which contains penalties for breaches of the policy. It is for this reason why we need to consult with all our valued stakeholders. The International Labour Organization, of which Trinidad and Tobago is a member state, conducted a legal gap analysis to review the laws of Trinidad and Tobago in this area. The ILO director pointed out there needs to be amendments to the language of the policy. By ensuring that we make it illegal to discriminate against workers or job applicants based on their legal status, on their HIV status, the adapted terminology and legislative framework should therefore emphasize that all workers must be treated equal, without prejudice, regardless of their health status. Secretary of Health, Wellness and Social Protection, Dr. Faith B. Israel, urged attendees to not let the day go to waste and called on those with the authority to see to it that the final goal is achieved. But, Honorable Minister, to go back to the Cabinet and to go back to the Parliament and indicate that we are 40 years late 
and therefore we should not be wasting any more time with this because you, me, can have our lives changed by tomorrow morning. The HIV Workplace Advocacy Unit of the Ministry of Labor is mandated to implement the National Workplace Policy on HIV and AIDS for Trinidad and Tobago in all workplaces, including the public and the private sectors. Carissa Douglas, TTT News. In Trinidad and Tobago, the Ministry of Labor continues their consultations as the government aims to develop legislation to combat discrimination against persons living with HIV and AIDS in all areas of employment. More in this report. Donor countries and agencies are facing their own sets of shocks and conflicts. The dire truth is that development assistance for developing countries facing catastrophic events is waning. Dr. Simona Marinescu, who is UNOP's senior advisor on SIDS, sets the scene. Over the last four years, assistance to SIDS declined by 22%. Of course, part of it is because SIDS continue to do better in terms of their economic performance, but that doesn't mean that they would not need financing, particularly when they have such large size disasters. Prime Minister Gaston Brown has long touted the Multidimensional Vulnerability Index as an evidence-based and robust quantitative benchmark designed to assess structural vulnerability. Dr. Marinescu agrees. She's confident the SIDS4 conference will provide the perfect avenue for discussions to precede widespread acceptance of the MVI as an indicator of those countries mostly in need of developmental and recovery financing. We will speak in Antigua and Barbuda about the index and then um, the Secretary General of the United Nations will host a roundtable with the international financial institutions the first, the second day uh, of the conference uh, actually. And we believe that at this General Assembly in September, the index will see an endorsement by uh, all member states so that we start testing it. Dr. Marinescu is, however, encouraging SIDS, including Antigua Barbuda, to look at alternative sources of wealth to boost their economies. We speak at the United Nations about the beyond GDP agenda, which means we need to be able to look into what other sources of wealth exist. So the management of natural resources, both on land and uh, off land, would be at the heart of the next uh, agenda. She also recommends digitizing certain sections of the economy. In Antigua and Barbuda, a top United Nations official has expressed full support for the Global Multidimensional Vulnerability Index, recently unveiled by Prime Minister Gaston Brown. Ursul Charles Jr. reports. Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Ashni Singh, has highlighted Guyana's exponential economic growth and its massive investment potential. The minister was at the time speaking at Jamaica Promotions Corporation's Jampro's third business mission to Guyana at the Marriott Hotel. The trade mission is led by the Jamaican Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill. Minister Singh said this tremendous growth is driven largely by the oil and gas sector as many tier one contractors are flocking the country. Every production platform of children automatically and necessarily translates into demand for goods and services onshore. And several of the most recognizable tier one contractors to the oil industry have already set up or are in the process of setting up operations in Guyana. Whether it be Halliburton, Slumberger, Baker Hughes, and several others, having come to Guyana, recognizing scale, scope, and anticipated duration of Exxon Mobil's operations in Guyana, possibly other operators. In sports, the Barbados government and the People's Republic of China have taken a major step towards the start of the Barbados National Stadium Redevelopment Project as the two nations have signed an implementation agreement. The national stadium just behind me has not been used for track and field for several months. However, this morning, the Barbados government and the People's Republic of China 
move one step closer to providing the framework for a new world-class athletics facility to be built right here in Waterford. During a ceremony at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, an implementation document was signed by Permanent Secretary Joy Addison and China's Economic and Commercial Councillor Yang Li, which will guide the process for the reconstruction of the new stadium. No start date has been revealed, as the tendering process will soon start in China, but the project is expected to be completed in 29 months. The first phase is inclusive of the demolition of the existing stadium and will cost $76.7 million complements grant funding. Minister of Sports Charles Griffith says he's hoping work will begin as soon as possible. It is expected that we will have a facility that will seat 10,000 persons in the initial phase, phase one. Um, I'm hoping that now the the implementation agreement will be signed today that in quick time, a couple of months after the Chinese side do what they have to do in terms of identifying a construction company, that we can see some movement at this location. Um, just like everyone else on island, I too am eager and looking forward to this. Um, we have waited a long time for this to come, but there were certain details that had to be ironed out, that had to be put in place in terms of the standards, in terms of what um, the China side was requesting and what we were requesting. Now we have um, reached that agreement. Minister Griffith also hopes the new stadium will help to improve the standard of track and field in Barbados and increase the island's medal count at major meets. I'm hoping that this will see an influx of athletes um, at the national level. I'm hoping that we can see increased performances as a result of having a, a brand new stadium. So this can only redound to the benefit of everyone who's involved in track and field. The project will also be a major avenue for the creation of social economic opportunities for Barbadians. And Chinese Ambassador Yang Shen alluded to strengthening ties between the two countries. The redevelopment of the national stadium will play an important role in pro promoting employment, developing sports, improving people's livelihoods and implementing the 2030 agenda for sustainable development for Barbados. China will maintain close collaboration with Barbados and make every effort to promote the early commencement of the project so as to make the National Stadium a new landmark for Barbados and a new benchmark of China-Barbados friendship. An artist's impression of what the new stadium will look like has been erected outside of the current facility. Anmar Goodrich Boyce, CBC Sports. In cricketing news, Cable and Wireless Communications, parent company of Flow, has been announced as the official and exclusive telecoms supporter in the Caribbean for the upcoming ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2024. As the official telecommunications supporter for the event in the Caribbean, CNW Communications will provide innovative services and support to ensure seamless connectivity and communication throughout the tournament. CNW Communications will play a crucial role as they will be providing high-speed internet access and reliable mobile networks to keep players, officials, fans and stakeholders connected. CNW Business will also provide internet connectivity services for the tournament's official media hub at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre in Barbados, the host venue for the final. This first-of-its-kind remote media hub for the ICC Men's T20 World Cup will feature the minimum 200 megabits per second download upload speeds and can facilitate 200 traveling journalists from around the world. And that's it for the news on PBCJ. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Thanks so much for watching.